Good morning, everybody. It is good to be with you today. You may be well aware that throughout the year of 2024, we are attempting to emphasize our need for fellowship. And we've defined fellowship as joining in God's redemptive plan. And that we want to emphasize that we as Christians join together not only to grow our relationships with one another, but to help move one another closer towards heaven and ultimately to help draw others towards him because that way we can join in God's redemptive plan. And one of the ways that we are emphasizing our need for fellowship is by reading text together. Uh, this month we're in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. Let's read that text together. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus' Son cleanses us from all sin. If you look on your bulletin this morning, uh, you will see that the uh, lesson is supposed to be entitled A Biblical View of Self-Image. That is this lesson right here. But it's not the lesson we're going to do today. Uh, because, quite frankly, my heart just isn't in it today. Um... My heart is only partly here today. Part of my heart is just a couple, down, uh, a couple of miles down the road where my little girl is in the NICU. I might or might not make it through this one today. I've spent a lot of the last couple of days contemplating We praise God in the middle of storms. And so today, I just simply wanted to take some time to share with you some of my own thoughts as I wrestle with how do we continue to praise our God in those hard times and those storms of life, in those difficult times that sometimes don't necessarily make sense. And I know that I'm not the only one who's experienced storms or may be experiencing storms now. I'm not naive enough to think that. And as we contemplate together how we are to praise and love our God in the midst of the storms of life, I hope that we are reminded of how good our God is and how thankful we are to have a good God. Romans chapter 8. If you've got your Bibles, how many Bibles do we have? Romans chapter 8, and I want us to look at a passage that I suspect most of us are familiar with. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. It's a passage that we often refer to in the midst of difficult times. But I think it's important to notice what the passage doesn't say before we notice what the passage does say. The passage does not say that all things are good. But there are some things that are not good. Some things that cannot be described as good. There are some things in life that just are not good. And the passage never said that all things are good, but rather that God works all things together for good. But he didn't stop there. God works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. In other words, he doesn't do all things in what necessarily we would describe our understanding or our version of what good is. What we do see in the passage is that God, who is a good God, is at work doing good things, even if we don't necessarily understand when, even if we don't understand how, even if it's not necessarily our definition of goodness, that we serve a good God who is at work doing good things. And if we serve a good God who is at work doing good things, even in the darkest of moments of life, then it shouldn't surprise us to see moments of good, what we might call moments of grace, as we go through those times. And over the years, one of the things that I've learned to do is to look for those moments of grace, to look for those moments of good. Not that the situation is good, but look for the moments. Sometimes we're told to count our blessings, and certainly we should. I'm not disparaging that. But in the midst of those dark times, counting our blessings can almost seem as though we are diminishing the challenge that exists, as though we're trying to pretend it's not there. Uh, look at all the good things, don't look at this bad thing. Look at all the good things, and then, you know, the bad thing really wasn't that big of a deal if you consider all the good. 
I don't think that's what we mean, but that's sometimes, at least from my perspective, what we end up thinking. Rather, instead of merely counting our blessings, rather that we are to look for the good in the midst of the dark times. In our case, it's that everything was caught before we left. We were two hours away from heading home. Uh, Lily got to come and spend a couple days with us there in the hospital while we waited for Aurora to recuperate. And we were two hours from being released when she started having some uh, breathing difficulties. I'm thankful that it was there as opposed to at home. I'm thankful that my boys got to come see her a couple hours before she went to the NICU. These little moments of grace. Again, it's, it's not that the situation is good, but that what are the moments of good that exist within it? The moments that remind us that a good God is at work doing good things, even if the situation itself cannot be described as good. The Bible describes a spiritual war that exists. A war that is somewhat difficult to get our minds around and that at times is, creates this tension. For we're told that God has power over all things, and he does. And we're told that God knows everything, and he does. But exactly as to how that work can be difficult to wrap our heads around. Because we're also told that we're in a spiritual war, and in a war both sides act independently of one another. Both sides attack one another, which means that some of the things that happen in our lives are not necessarily the result of God doing it, but rather the result of someone else. In this case, perhaps the result of Satan, or perhaps just living in a world where sin exists. But the comfort that we are given in the midst of that is that a good God refuses to allow darkness to have the last word and works in the midst of it. And as we go through those challenging times, the midst of the storms of life, we should look for those moments of grace, the moments that remind us that our God has not forgotten us, that we are not alone, and that he is at work even and sometimes, sometimes those moments of grace come with a face. Because one of the ways that God works is through his people. Now, throughout scripture we see God working through his people. In fact, most of scripture is God working through one or two individuals uh, for a whole group. There are exceptions. But for the most part, it's God working through one prophet or one judge or one apostle or one individual for uh, the sake of all who are there, that it's a record of God working through his people to accomplish his will. And he does the same thing still today. For I am thankful for this family. And I am thankful for the grace that you've given us and the way that you've taken care of us. Well, whether it's been just simply given gifts because turns out babies use a lot of diapers, who knew? Or whether it's been being there whenever we needed to call you late, late at night uh, and say, hey, you know what, we're headed to the hospital. We're thankful for those who we can rely on, who we can lean on. And sometimes those moments of grace, the reminder that God is at work, come with a face by someone who shows their love and their kindness and their graces you have and remind us that we're not alone. And we have a God who loves us and who continues to work on our behalf through his people. And there's a third one that I'd like us to think about. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks. Okay, simple enough. In all circumstances. Ah. How do we give thanks in the midst of storms? And what are we to be thankful for? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That it is God's will that we get. It's a pretty simple, easy statement. And yet it's one that's not always easy to do. How are we to give thanks? What are we to give thanks for in the midst of the storms and the darkness of life when uh, there are things that are not good? How are we to give thanks and what are we to give thanks for? 
one, the text says, in Christ Jesus, that we are to give thanks, uh, that we have a relationship with Christ, that we have hope in him, and that there's hope in eternity. We should always give thanks for that. Uh, that no matter where we are at, no matter what is going on, no matter how bad it gets, that we always have hope in eternal life with him forever. But this week I've been contemplating on the storm. There are at least three instances in Scripture where Jesus is in the midst of a storm. Uh, two specific ones where he stands up and says, be quiet. Or he calms the winds and the waves. One of which he's asleep in. Asleep in the boat. And I've always wondered what were going through the apostles' minds, the disciples' minds, as they looked for Jesus in the midst of the storm uh, and came to wake him up of, how can you sleep through this? And more importantly, why are you asleep? And then there's the one in John we talked about today where Jesus walks on the water. Now, I realize Jesus does not explicitly state, be quiet. However, it does say as soon as he got into the boat, the storm ceased. So I'm counting that one as well. So there are three times where the storm is calmed or stopped. And I've contemplated on two different thoughts. That one, they had to go through the storm. For Jesus allows them with them so that they weren't there by themselves. Yes, they had to go through the storm, but it wasn't that they went through the storm on their own. God, who loves his people, who takes care of his people, Oops. but who stays with them in the middle of it. He doesn't prevent it necessarily. He doesn't always allow us to avoid them, but never departs us in the midst of them. And so we can praise God in the storm because he is in the storm as well. I know this has been short today, but I hope that we leave. We're being reminded of how good our God is. That yes, we go through the storms of life and the challenges and the difficulties that exist. That's just part of living in this world. But that we can be comforted and be thankful that we serve a good God who is at work doing good things and never leaves us even in the midst of the storms of life. Perhaps you're here today and you want to begin a relationship with the one who does love you most, the good God who loves you most. And there's nothing that would help excite us more than to help you start that journey which begins at baptism. Or perhaps you're here and you too find yourself in the midst of the storms of life and you want the prayers of the church. If there's any way we can assist you, won't you come? As together we stand. And stand. Oh.